Greetings, everybody. I'm Minister Monique, Overseer of River of Life Worldwide Ministry. And we have, as usual, our beautiful Pastor Elizabeth, Pastor uh, of Greater Faith Outreach Ministries. Hallelujah. Um, on her website, if you go to greaterfaithoutreachministries.com, hallelujah, um, you will see so many teachings, so many uh, words of encouragement, so many uplifting times. I guarantee you, whatever it is you're going through, she has a library full of it that'll really be able to minister unto you. Um, today, before we get started, we're going to pray. We are in the book of Revelations, chapter 2, verses 18, with uh, the church Thyatara, but we really know that you need to be ministered unto. Mm -hmm. It's December 11th, and it's 2020, and we just want to say we feel your pain, and we know exactly what you're going through. We're feeling uh, the intense uh, depression. We're, we're feeling, you know, the, the suicidal tendencies that people are dealing with. We're feeling the discouragement. We're feeling, you know, the, 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 the depression that people are dealing with. We're even uh, feeling the financial <clears throat> overload and the burden um, that, that you're dealing with. And we just, we want everybody to know that these times are unprecedented. But guess what? No matter what, God is not a haphazard God. He will not leave you comfortless. He will never abandon you and he will never forsake you. He will always make sure that you have provision. What that provision looks like, how that provision is going to come, we can't, we, we don't know. All we can know, all we can do is tell you by faith and experience that God is going to see you through every situation that you're going through. So before we teach, let's get in, um, a, a, let's get in a time and a moment of just supplication before the Lord, and we're going to enter into prayer and know that we're laboring in this together. We feel everything that you feel. It's touching us as well. And we're calling upon Jesus for some supernatural strength. We're calling for some divine upon our natural. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Pastor, would you like to start <clears throat> off in prayer? Amen. Yes. Dear Father thank God, you. we just thank you for giving us the opportunity to pray for others, Father God, because you said the prayers of the righteous availeth much. So we just come in agreement right now, Lord God, knowing that you're going to go out there and, and touch people's hearts, Father God. We just want to encourage them today, Lord God. We just want to just encourage those who feel abandoned, those who feel hopeless, Lord God, because you said hope deferred to make a heart sick. So, Lord God, we pray for those hearts, Lord God, that you would strengthen their hearts, strengthen their mind, Lord God. Take away the pain and the anxiety, Lord God, for, from them, Lord God. Help them with the discouragement that they have, Lord God. Lord God, you are God who loves us, Lord God, and you are God of miracles. There's nothing that you can't do. So there's people out there, Lord God, that are suffering depression, deep, deep depression. They feel like they don't want to give up anymore. And I'm talking to you out there. If you're feeling that way, no, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. God's going to come to your rescue. He's going to send somebody, might send somebody at the door. Some, someone might send something through the mail. God's going to reach you, okay? Because he loves you. And we always talk about he loves us so much he gave his own son. So is there anything else he won't do for you? He's going to come to your rescue. Just sometimes all only thing we can say is Jesus. Just say, yes. Jesus, 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 I need you. He will no way turn you away. He will not turn you away. He'll hear your cry. He'll hear your answer. Just be in faith knowing that he's going to do that, okay? Just know that he's going to do that. So we pray for anxiety. We pray for depression. We pray for those who are... Are, are, are on the edge of suicide. Don't give up. Don't give up. Weeping may endure for a night, but your joy is getting ready to come. You're on the verge of a miracle. You're on a verge of a miracle right now. In the name of Jesus, we declare and we decree it that God's going to meet your every need. He's going to do it supernaturally. He's going to do it for you. Amen. He's yeah. done it for me so many times. I have a record of all the things that he's done. 
not all of them, because you can't, I couldn't even remember everything that he's done, but I have an archive of the testimonies and the things that he's brought me through. And if he did it for me and did it for Monique, he can mm -hmm. do it for you. Okay, so Jesus, I thank you. I thank you in advance because you told me, don't worry, don't be anxious for nothing, but in all things in prayer and supplication, making my request known unto you, and you will give me peace that surpasses all understanding, that's able to guard my heart and to guard my mind. That military tranquil peace, Lord God, give it to me right now. Clothe me with that peace. Clothe me, Father God. God, with that joy, Father God. He will do it. Just say thank you, Lord, in advance. He said, do not worry. Do not be anxious about yes. anything, but trust him. You can't see him. You can't see the COVID either, but it's yes. there. Just believe that God's going to do something for you today. This is your day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm. I just, I thank just feel Jesus. Minister to somebody out there, especially yes. people um, that are going through uh, COVID. And I know that that does not feel good on the body. And I know a lot of you uh, are, are feeling very scared. I just want you to know that God is going to walk with you yes. during fear. Psalms yes. 91, read that in, in Psalms 23, or have somebody play that. You, you might be too weak to read, but you can always uh, play yes. the audio Bible. A, a really quick testimony. When I was pregnant a couple years ago, I was so depleted and I couldn't eat that I went into a very uh, deep depression. And I used to sit in the bed and my thoughts were very tormenting. And I would send Jesus little text messages. I would send him long text messages actually about how I was feeling, you know, on the inside. And every day I never gave up. Um, I can't say I got better in the next day or the next week, but I, I never gave up. And I prayed through until I got a breakthrough. And one of the times I got a breakthrough, I, I saw a vision. And in the vision, I saw Jesus actually leaving his throne. He left his throne and he came down and he rescued me. And I held on to that. So what am I telling you? That keep praying. Yeah. Don't up until you know that you know that you know whether it's a dream whether it's a word whether it's a scripture whether it's a song whether it's somebody calling you and telling you hold on to what god gives you he's going to come through and guess what um i, I held on to that that vision that i saw and jesus he he was faithful unto his word he came and he rescued me and he made, he stabilized my mind. He took the pain away. He took the nausea away. He allowed me to be able to eat again. All I'm mm. saying, I had to hold on for some time. This is what I want people to understand. A lot of people think that, you know, that quick fixes come overnight. Well, I want you to know my quick fix didn't come overnight. Just like we've been trying to teach mm -hmm. you about some of these churches. The Lord says, persevere, endure. That means that you have to hold on to the word of God. And sometimes you have to hold on longer than you could ever imagine or expect. But the fact that you're holding on, the fact that you're not giving up, the fact that you're still uttering the, uh, uttering the name of Christ shows your faith, okay? So just know that this situation is going to get better. Know that your body is going to heal. Know yes. that the Lord will visit every cell and every organ of yes. your body. And he will stamp out and wipe out everything that is foreign. And he will replace it with his grace, with his glory, and with his DNA. And we believe that not only for your body, but for the bodies that you're, you're praying for, your family members that are affected by this. Yes. Son, daughter, you're not going to die. You will live. Don't mm -hmm. give in to the fear. Don't give in to the panic. Don't give in to the depression right now. We're all going through. We're all in a crunch. We're all in a bind. We're all feeling suffocated. We're all feeling confused. We're all just going through this together. But just know, God will never leave you. He never. will never leave you. 
So Father, in the name of Jesus, those dealing with the COVID, those dealing with the depression, like Pastor Elizabeth said, those who are dealing with um, the, the, the suicidal tendencies, Father, this day we call upon you. Yes, we ask yes, for the yes. of the angels. There's more angels, the Bible says, on our side than there is on the side of the enemy. Father, we release, we, we ask that you would release, hallelujah, angels to encircle everybody that is on the verge, everybody that is on the brink. And that's different for everyone, okay? But it's tailor-made for your situation. Thank Father, you, that you rescue and that those yes, angels yes, and yes, that those yes, angels be yes. a wall of fire around these the, our friends, our, our, our sons, our daughters, hallelujah, the grandchildren, everybody. Yes, and, that, yes. and that as the angels form a circle around them, Lord, that heaven's glory would be there. Mm -hmm. That Lord, that they would have that aha moment and that they would have peace. Yeah. There's, a young, there's a young man that I know and he had a, a, a near death experience recently. But as, as he was going in and out of conscious, as, as he was dying, um, he said he had a peace. And the peace was this. The peace was he was going to make it and that he wasn't gonna die. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you just might have that one glimmer of hope. Sometimes your word is you're not going to die. Mm -hmm. If that's yeah. your word, you hold Stand on to that yeah. word. Yeah. Doesn't matter how your body feels. Stand doesn't on that matter word. How the situation Amen. that's going on around you. As long as you have that word, that word is your weapon of mm -hmm. warfare. God is going to see you through it. He will give you a peace. You. Doesn't matter what it looks like, Thank but you. that peace will uh, uh, surpass all understanding and that peace will be your, your bread of life and that peace will sustain you for that season. If God just says one thing, love, then hold on to that word love because love will get you through. If God just says faith, hold on to faith because faith will get you through. Whatever God gives you, yes. it's tailor made Me. for your situation run with it hallelujah in Jesus' name in we Jesus feel name. this prayer in the blood in the blood amen. of jesus amen hallelujah. keep fighting the good fight of faith hallelujah yes, yes. thank you jesus hallelujah. praise god praise god thank you jesus with that we're going to uh, enter into our teaching we left off with the uh we uh just covered the Church of Pergamos. Now we're going to enter into the Church of Thyatira in the book of Revelation. And uh, I'm going to be again reading here and uh, then we'll go back. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. The angels of the Church of Thyatira write These things says the Son of God, who has eyes like the flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. I know your works, your love, your service, your faith, and your patience. And as your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel, who called herself a prophetess, Jezebel, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols and i gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality and she did not repent indeed i have cast her into a bed i will cast her into a bed a sick bed and those who commit adultery with her with it, with her into great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds i will kill her children and with death and all the churches shall know that i am he who searches the minds and the hearts, I will give to each one of you according to your works. Now, to you I say, and to the rest of thy attire, as many uh, as do not have this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan, as they, as they say, I will put on you no other burden, but hold fast what you have, what you have, till i come hold fast until i come and he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end to him i will give power over the nations 
he shall rule them with a rod iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like potter's vessels, as I also have received from my father, and I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, that's a lot. But we're going to, to backtrack on some of the things that we said because he said a lot. But in these teachings we've been talking about with these churches, uh, like Pastor said, it's like um, God is going through inventory or he's going to <laughs> Evaluation. Yeah, checking out, yeah, inventory, value, evaluation, evaluations, examination, all of this is to give you, God is giving them an opportunity, he's merciful right here, he's telling them what's going on, just like your children, you know, you have children, and you keep telling the children, okay, this is what, you know, I'm going to tell you how it is, mm -hmm. you keep hanging out with those people, you may get in trouble. So I'm mm -hmm. telling you right now, pull away from them. It might hurt you, hurt your feelings because you've been around those folks for so long. But you got to get away from them. Pray for them, but stay away from them because they're not good for you at this time. So the Lord is telling them, each church, he's telling them, he's evaluating them, like Pastor said, he's checking mm -hmm. them out. He said, I know you, I see your work, I know what's happening. This is what you need to do so I can give you the promise that I have for you. Amen. Okay, Pastor? Yes. That's what he's saying. That's beautiful. Hallelujah. I love how you put it. Um, I know these last couple of weeks, sometimes things might be like, oh, I'm hearing about evaluation time again. Um, I'm hearing about the checks and the balances. I'm hearing about the negatives. But there's a lot of uh, positives and accolades mm -hmm. uh, that Jesus gives unto this unto this church but mm -hmm. just know that no matter what he's looking uh to you as a father and how yeah. a father look unto the children just like pastor said so he's just tweaking things about the church okay mm -hmm. there, there's things that he's commending them for and there's things he's like well this <clears throat> needs tweaked here in order for you to have these these promises these rewards in order for you to receive you know the glorified body to reign and rule uh in the millennial kingdom and I, I think an easy way to approach uh, this church, Thyatara, to, uh, to me, and the way my <clears throat> thing is, he says, he says, I don't like how to tolerate Jezebel in the deep things of Satan. And I just want to touch upon that mm -hmm. what, because uh, the rebuke is harsh, okay? And there's sure nothing, not. we're not going to sugarcoat it, guys. The rebuke is harsh. The rebuke is pestilence, a bed of sickness, and death unto the children. And it's because there, there's a set in this particular church, and we can compare this to the modern day church, that we're into the deep things of Satan. And when we talk about the deep things of Satan, we are talking about, for example, manipulation. We're talking about levitation. We're talking about communicating uh, with familiar spirits mm -hmm. communicating uh, with uh, um, with um, you know psychics, <clears throat> not communicating with God, but communicating uh, with demonic spirits, a uh, necromancy, you know, communicating uh, unto the dead. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that I believe De Deuteronomy chapter thirteen that the Lord warns us of. There's a lot of demonic spirits who will jump at the opportunity uh, to give you information. For example, I'm going to throw myself out there. About 12 years ago, I was taking a shower and all of a sudden I heard this little noise. It went doop, doo, 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 doo. And all of a sudden, when I heard that noise, a spirit came to me and it says, I can make you rich and I can give you psychic powers. And then it said this, it said, matter of fact, your grandma has a bleeding ulcer. Okay. And it was a, a demon of divination and sorcery and witchcraft that came to me. And it saw that it, because spirits, they, they, uh, they watch your life. Okay. And it saw that I was advancing in the things of God. Mm -hmm. And what the demon did is it presented me with a gift. Okay. It, you know, it, it it's really, of course, a curse. Yeah. And I thought about it. I thought about it for a minute. You know, I was like, Ooh, I could be famous. 
Ooh, I could be like psych psychic Sylvia Brown. Ooh, I can make some money. Ooh, people will really love me because I, I, I in a flash of a moment, mm. all that temptation came to me. And then I said, you know what? I came to my senses and I says, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I will not receive my information <clears throat> from a spirit of sorcery, from a spirit of witchcraft, you know, from a seducing spirit, familiar spirit, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. I said, no. Well, you know, a couple hours later, my dad had called me and he says, you know, you know, your grandma um, has, ble has bleeding ulcers right now. So that spirit had just told me that. How did it know? Because it just observed, it observed the phone call that went to my dad, you know, from um, her doctor. Mm. The point I'm trying to make is that's an example of the deeper things of Satan. Mm -hmm. I know that once I rejected that temptation, just like Jesus re yeah, rejected Yeah, 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 exactly. Remember when Satan came and offered the temptation, showed yep. him all the symptoms and all the mm -hmm. glories. Like, you can have no. all this if you just serve me. He was trying to divert you from your real purpose. Exactly. And, you know, the thing is, is that God gives us true information. Mm -hmm. You know, and you, God, God has given us healing ministries. Mm -hmm. He's given us a, a, a lot of prophetic words that have come mm -hmm. to pass. The bottom line is, is that God wants us to get our knowledge and our information from him. Mm -hmm. I mean, you never get bored being a Christian. God will That's give right. you a, a healing ministry. He will give you authority to cast out demons. I could talk about that all day long. You know, God gives you supernatural gifts. Read first Corinthians chapter 12. Mm -hmm. So there were people who were actually getting involved. Another way, a deep thing of Satan, a lot of times, and we aired this, Pastor Elizabeth and I, maybe like 10 years ago, Pharmacia. Yeah. We talk, a lot of people will smoke weed. Because what smoking weed does, it opens it your alters the mind. Yeah. supernatural realm. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot, the world will call it the third eye. The third eye is, you know, uh, uh, the, your, your supernatural senses, except it opens you up to the mm -hmm. wrong spirit. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will meditate and they know how to transport, meaning they know how to leave their body. Pastor Elizabeth, they leave their body mm -hmm. and they go into someone else's home. You guys, this is true. Yeah, it's we true. To Africa, we, 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 we shared stories with the witch doctors, yep. all type of stuff. They leave their body. They go into people's bedroom and they just observe. They watch. They listen to conversations and then they come back into their body. Okay. That's called the deep things of Satan. I remember we were casting a demon out in two, December of 2009 and the spirit, he said, do you want to see me levitate? Do you want to see me levitate? Mm -hmm. And of course we were curious and we kind of did, but we knew that it was distracting from the greater purpose and the greater purpose was mm -hmm. to cast the demon out. So we ended up casting the demon out. But what I'm saying is they offer you power. And I asked yeah. the Lord, because one of the strongest demons uh, that I've encountered over the years is, is called a spirit of witchcraft. And I said, God, why is this demon so hard, you know, to cast out? It's because whoever is housing the spirit of witchcraft, it's very difficult for them to give that demon up because that demon comes with so much power. It comes with psychic abilities. It comes with, you know, seeing uh, into people's lives. Yeah. It comes with money, you know, because when you can prophesy, I'm, you know, psychically, not, not for God, but with a, with a familiar mm -hmm. spirit, mm -hmm. um, people run to you. They're drawn to you. Yeah, like, yeah. like the medium, there's a medium who comes on the TLC network. I can't remember her. Oh, she's called something, but she's a pretty girl, pretty white lady with the blonde hair and whatnot. But, um, she has a show and you know, it's under the, the show is under the guise that I'm talking to your dead family members and your dead family members are mm -hmm, passing mm -hmm, over, mm -hmm, you know, so, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. again, things like that. These are, and, and these you know are what, happening. and you see okay. this happening now because sometimes people can get pastors. Sometimes people can get so, um, what's the word where they really desperate. Yeah. They're getting yeah. so desperate for stuff. They want something so bad that they're open their self up to these demonic spirits, these yeah. witches and sorcerers and stuff like that. And don't even realize it. 
You know what I'm yeah. saying? They want something, and the promise is right there. The enemy is right there to jump right, right on in there, giving false hope, giving you pro false prophecies, and all these lying spirits will come in. So that's why we have to be very, we have to check and say, Lord, is this from you? You know, the Holy Spirit will give you that check, you know, to know if this is from him or not, because they're waiting to to latch, in, latch on to you. Because I know, I've been there. I know how the enemy will promise you all these things. And and being a pastor over the years, I've seen people being levitated on the, off the ground, a lady of over 200 some pounds being lifted up, le levitated. A little girl, like 17 years old, my kids saw it too. The yes. 17 years old, she had supernatural strength. It took like nine men to hold her down. You yeah. know, these spirits yes. are real. And they so real. that's why the Lord was warning them to get rid of that, get away from that. Yes. Don't even entertain a Don't little entertain bit of it. it. And like I said, again, people are so desperate nowadays that they'll, that I want this, I want my way, I want my money, I want, I don't want my, ta I want my taxes paid, I want this, I want that, you know, yeah. until they, 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 they end this, they'll get in, the enemy will make a deal, he'll yeah. make a deal with them, so yeah. It's the easy way out, Pastor, um, mm -hmm. that's the thing, I've, over the years being in deliverance ministry, I've casted demons out of people, and I asked them, how did you get uh, how did you get on the inside of a person? A lot of times I've seen a lot of women who are desperate and they're open their legs, you know, and they have all types of sexual experiences. Mm -hmm. and I don't mean to sound so graphic, you know, but I'm a raw, raw, Ruth, you know, raw, yeah, that's your person. <laughs> but as, as soon as these men would release on the inside of them, not only would they release sexually, but they would release spiritually. spiritually. And so these demons would say, I came in through all these sexual partners. Mm -hmm. That's why mm -hmm. she's dealing with, you know, multiple personality disorder. You know, that's why so-and-so is dealing with schizophrenia. That's why so-and-so has cancer, you know, because they gave me an open doorway by way of sinning. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It was an open doorway. Yeah, yeah, desperate, yeah, desperate, yeah. desperate, not wanting to wait for the husband, not willing to say no, wanting the temp, wanting the temporary mm -hmm. fix mm -hmm, mm -hmm, cost mm -hmm. them emotional, mental, and, and, and spiritual uh, turmoil. And see, this is the thing with this generation, like you said, pastor, People are desperate. It's the microwave generation. I'm hungry. I want to eat now. Yeah. See, 30 years ago, you would have to get in the kitchen. You would have to spend two hours, and then the meal was ready. Yep. Now, you can go, I want a Big Mac. I want French fries, and I want a drink. Bam. Just okay? drive through. And mm -hmm. see, that's, that's not... <laughs> This is more the most important thing that I want to communicate unto you today is the church. People have lost putting in elbow work and putting in knee work. They've lost their labor of love. Okay. Mm -hmm. To do it the way of the enemy is the mm -hmm. easy way out. It really, mm -hmm. I, I know pastor, you're, you look like you want to say something. Yeah, I'm just saying, no, I'm, I'm glad you're putting this out here because we're going to give please. them the antidote. We want to give them answer how to get out of it today. Amen. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's the thing when Jesus, and this is the rebuke is this, and we'll break it down. We'll break it down this way. Okay. He says, I'm going to, I'm going to send sickness. That's mercy. To be sick is merciful because at least yeah, you're alive. At least you have time to repent when you're sick, you know, and, and at least look, I didn't, I don't know how many times I didn't been on my deathbed or my sick bed. Okay. And I thank the Lord. And it's been for many a different reasons. Don't have time to talk about that. All right. But the, but when he says, I will kill the children, you have to understand that by this time, the teachings, like we've taught in these previous weeks, the teachings were so intermixed. They were so poisoned that it was no longer Christianity any longer. It was a, a buffet of any and everything. It was people doing right according to their own hearts, mm -hmm. not God's heart. Did you get that? Yeah. People yeah, were yeah. doing right. So they were doing what they felt was right, okay? Doesn't that sound like our generation? Mm -hmm. Love who you want to love. Mm -hmm. Be who you want to be. Marry who you want to marry. Sleep with who you want to sleep with. What about God? Yeah. We can't mm -hmm. forget that we are here on assignment 
okay? And there's checks and there's balances, there's statutes, there's ordinances, mm -hmm. there's, there's rules of engagement here. Um, this is God's mm -hmm. uh, land. This is God's earth. So by the time the rebuke came, there had been another generation, a second generation of a ministry of a church that had been birthed out. And it was so far removed from Christianity. Yeah. It was yeah. the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. It was the deep things of Satan, which we talked about. Mm -hmm. It was Jezebel and her, and her manipulations. And when you hear Jezebel, it was spiritual idolatry. Yeah. Christians yeah. moved from the worship of God to worshiping uh, um, um, die, die, dio, diocesis. Okay. Yes, yeah. Diocesis, mm -hmm, Caesar, mm -hmm. um, Zeus, uh, Bacchus, uh, Diana. Um, they were, uh, offering incense to demonic powers, uh, yep. uh, and entities. That's the, the bottom line is there were pagan gods. It was no longer Christianity. So the rebuke, when it's saying, I'm going to kill your children, I'm going to send pestilence. God had no other, he has no other choice at times, mm -hmm. but to wipe out a generation, because if you don't, and I don't, I don't mean to sound uh, heartless or insensitive, but this is the thing. If you don't wipe it out, then everybody yeah, else yeah. is going to be poisoned. Mm -hmm. Everybody mm -hmm. else is going to be affected. And it's just, it's, I know it, we don't want to hear this, but if you look at the old Testament, you will see the Lord is like, don't spare he don't spare none. Yeah. And it's because he wanted to wipe that evil. The Amalekite. The good news. Yeah. The good news. Yeah. Uh, but what's the, the good news? The good is news. That, <laughs> is that there's mercy. Jesus mm -hmm. is interceding. Mm -hmm. There's repentance. Mm -hmm. And it does not have to get to the point where people are cut off from the heavenly from the, Father it's, eternally. Exactly. It, so and this is the whole point of him giving them church. That's the whole point of he, him telling John to to write those letters and give it, give them to the churches. And yes. you know, with uh, you can kind of identify with Jezebel and what she was about, the immorality and the the witchcraft and all that. If you go to the book of Kings, Kings chapter one, book uh, I think it's seven sixteen. Chapter yeah. 16 is a lot of, it's a lot talking about that and how Jezebel was encouraging this, this to happen. And people were, were, you know, jumping on board with her. And so he's, this awesome. is like pastor said, it's a forewarning. He's given us a forewarning warning, get off of that ship, get off that boat. When you see people continuously trying to, they're hunger and thirsty after something they want, they want, and they're prophesying, prop lying and, and prop -lying. doing oh, all yeah. these things. The enemy's coming in, giving them information. You know, he, yeah. the enemy is doing a lot yeah. of those things. So God is saying, get away from that. Come back to me. Come back to me. People have gotten so far from the cross now. It's like, yeah. whoa, let me do this myself. Let me pay my way out. You know, go back to the cross. Fight the good fight of faith. What happened? You know, that's what God is saying. Come on back to me. Come on back to your service, the, what you used to do. Yeah. You know, don't get so mm -hmm. desperate and carried away and in the flesh until you forget. Who That's is the right. real, who is the commander? Who is the chief? Who is the president? Who is the governor? Who is the king of kings? Who is the Lord of lords? Who is the omnipotent God? Who reigns supreme? Who is the creator of all of heaven and earth? We got to get back to him, you know? And he's Hallelujah. telling them, he's giving them instruction. He told them, okay, I see what's going on with you, but yeah. this is what you can do. I'm going to give you some instructions. You yes. do this and I won't do that. You do yes. this and I won't do that. You do this and I'll give you this. You know, God is so good. It's an exchange. It's an exchange. Just like he tells us when we're doing something that's not good for us, it's going to harm our body. He'll tell you, get rid of it. You know, get rid of that thing. That thing is going to kill you. Kill it yeah. before it kills you. And that's what he's been telling them. Kill that before it kills you. I'm excited. I look, you know, as a preacher, we could preach, kill that before it kills you. Mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. Pastor, he gives them the tools. He mm -hmm. says, I know your works. Okay. He says, I know you're persevering. Mm -hmm. That's one key guys continue to persevere, continue to hold on to faith, continue yes. to 
love in spite of what's going on. Continue to give in spite of what your bank account looks like. Now, I'm not yes. saying get in debt, and I'm not, we're not a prosperity uh, uh, preacher or anything like that. But what we're saying is that if you have a little bit left and you see somebody else is struggling, mm -hmm. give, give out of the portion that you have. And the mm -hmm. Father is going to open the windows of heaven and he's going to bless you. Hallelujah. Continue to, uh, even if it's 10 minutes a day that you're reading your scripture, continue to persevere in reading your scripture. Mm -hmm. If God has placed upon you to uh, fast and pray, then continue to fast and pray. Mm -hmm. You know, he says, continue to, uh, in the beginning, he says, I know your faith. Okay. Keep Feeling your faith. Keep stoking the fire. Hallelujah. How do you stoke the fire? You stoke the fire by listening to these teachings. You stoke the fire by having Bible study with yourself. You stoke the fire by praising and worshiping the Lord. You stoke the fire even by at nighttime, um, leaving praise and worship on throughout the night. You stoke the fire when you're speaking, uh, speaking the word of God out. You stoke the fire when you're calling and you're encouraging one another, okay? He Amen. says, continue in the faith. When you resist the devil, it says he will flee. So when you turn temptation down, no, everybody has a different form of temptation and temptation presents itself to people in different ways. If you continue to resist, hallelujah, you're persevering, you're enduring, and you're overcoming. And Amen. then he, he commends them. He says, I know that you're, you're, your works now, they're yep. better than previous. So what does that mean? That means <clears throat> you're growing. Okay. Yeah. As long if you're as long as you're growing, you're glowing. <laughs> Do you get that? As That's long good. as you're growing, <laughs> you're glowing. That's you're glowing good. with the anointing. Mm -hmm. You're glowing yep. with the radiance of Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. You're glowing yeah, in you. love. You're glowing and you utilizing the gifts of the spirit. You're glowing with the word of prophecy, with the word of healing, with the word of knowledge, with the word of faith, with the word, you know, of teaching. You're, as long as you're growing and you're filling yourself up in the spirit, then you're going to gratify the things of the spirit. You're going to operate in the spirit. You're going to speak in the spirit. You're going to meditate upon the spirit. You're going to walk in the spirit and you will be an endless well that people can constantly well, yeah, draw yeah, from. Yeah. Hallelujah. So he's commending the church and the antidote is to continue to do these things in spite yeah. of where you're at. We know temptation mm -hmm. is all around you. We live in the United States. We know it's, it's easier to sin than to not sin. Mm -hmm. We know right now, we want to take Xanaxes, we want to take um, Prozacs, we want to take Valiums, we want to drink, we want to pop the pills, you know, we want to sex it. We, we just want to do anything to feel better. But if you can resist that for the kingdom, yes, 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 earn it to give yes, you. yes, yes. And, and the Bible tells us to resist the enemy, resist him and he'll flee from you. You got to resist take time to resist him just don't give in to that that flesh that desire you know said lord help me i need you you know the 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 the, the, the flesh is weak but the spirit is always there and willing and ready to be there for you just like i said before you can just sometimes you can't do nothing but say jesus jesus help me Put on some worship music. I know uh, uh, one of my nieces had called me the other day. They were going through some things. And I said, well, she said, I can't sleep at night. I can't sleep. I'm gone. I said, so much going on. I'm just depressed. I can't sleep. And I told her, put on some promise and see, on YouTube, or you can get your CD yeah. or whatever. Play some uh, worship music. You know, they got songs that you can play all night with the word. It's just calming music is just worship music with the word of God speaking the word of God it's got the Psalms in it and all that and I do it too and I go right to sleep I listen to the word of God yeah. playing you know yeah. they have something that plays for 10 hours yeah. or so you can put yeah. something over the screen or black the screen out and just listen turn it down low and listen to it let it get into your soul you know let it saturate your members and your emotions and you know you'll feel you come out the next day you say whoo thank you jesus you made it, you made <laughs> it the another day. Of, yes the word of god is life it's life giving you know this book is a, this book is alive 
You know, this book is a lie. And you know, you read it, it's different from any book. You read it, you get so much peace. I know it was times where I would stay up all night reading and knowing I had to go to work. And I said, Lord, I don't want to go to work. I want to get into it. You know, it energizes you, you know? So anyway, I just encourage you guys, and we both, we encourage you, don't pick up the devil's ticket. He don't, you don't, he don't have no place in you. Don't throw away his old That's tickets, right. his, you know, and, and come to Christ and pick up the word of God. Don't believe his own lies. I'll do this and I'll get you this. You get with this certain group and they'll pray for you and they'll speak mm-hmm. over you, these witches and stuff like that. A lot of them are witches. Don't do yeah. it. Let go to God one on one. Say, Lord, I need you, and He'll do it. You know, because He loves you. He said nothing can separate you from His love. <laughs> That's right. So we just we want to leave you with the promises today. Yeah. And Pastor Elizabeth read in Revelations two and twenty six, and He says, "If you keep My words until mm-hmm. the end." He says, I will give you authority over the nations and you'll rule a portion with the rod of iron. Mm -hmm. And when he says that, that means during the millennial kingdom, and we'll break this down in in, in lessons to come, during that millennial kingdom, that thousand year reign, he will put you as a vice regent. He will put you as a governor. He will put you in some form of authority over the world um, at that particular time. And you'll be teaching the statutes and the ordinances, hallelujah, of Christ Jesus. You'll actually be ruling and reigning with him, you know, during, you know, his, his time of, of that utopian government when he's still, yeah. he's still putting, you know, a, a, an end um, to sin and evil. He also says, uh, you'll rule with a rod and iron, of, of mm-hmm. iron as the vessels of the potter are broken to pieces. Meaning that anointing, you'll, be, you'll have a different mindset because you'll have a glorified body, but you'll have the mindset of Christ Jesus. So you'll operate in that wisdom, in the power, in the, the just, justice, in the authority, in that government ship that Jesus has, hallelujah. When you receive that glorified body, you are no, after you're resurrected, you are no longer the same person. You no longer uh, think the same. You no longer look the same. Go back to our teaching and look at the new Jesus. The new yeah. Jesus looks totally different than the first Jesus that you know visited the earth. Mm-hmm. You'll have a garment change. You'll have a rhema change. You'll have a, 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 a mental, emotional, spiritual, yep. physical change. And you'll be ruling in perfect unison, hallelujah, with that of Christ Jesus. And it won't be that you're lording it over people and you won't have an arrogancy. No, no. You won't have a pride. No, that sin will not exist in a glorified saint anymore. No. And we're doing the best that we can to try to it, it, um, explain this. But he says, he says, I will give you the, just like God gave me authority. And just like we know Jesus is the morning star. Yeah. Um, Oh, that's, that's, <laughs> the morning star is Woo. just think of it this way thank you lord mm. it's 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 like the sun the sun nothing shines like the sun by day and nothing shines like the moon by night you can possess such mm-hmm. a high rank See, if you go, if you follow us with the first Corinthians chapter 15 teaching, you'll see the levels of ranks that people will have Mm -hmm. earned because of their faithfulness. Hallelujah. Remember, we preached this last week or taught there are martyrs who will receive a crown of life. And not everybody's going to receive the martyr's crown because you have to be a martyr, hallelujah, in order to receive that crown. There's going to be different Different. levels of rewards and giftings based upon you. What did you give up? What did you sacrifice? What did you endure? What did you uh, persevere um, um, over? Hallelujah. What did you work for? Jesus promised that if you give up everything in this lifetime, he promises that in now and even in the mm-hmm. lifetime to come, you're going to be blessed. Yes. Okay. Overcomer. So, <laughs> ha- hallelujah. There's mm-hmm. so many, so many problems. He talked about the new stone, he, you know, mm-hmm. the marriage supper of the la- I mean, there's, there's, there's so, so many, many promises. promises. Yes. Yes. For those who overcome. Hallelujah. Those who overcome. It's just a matter of just hanging in there, continue to fight a good fight of faith. 
you know, and, and just be connected, just continue to be connected with the Lord and make it personal. I always think about yes. my, I call him my son, <laughs> Paul. Yeah. Uh, Paul always, he used to tell me, he said, Pastor, I'm, I'm, I'm having and getting ready to have breakfast. I set a plate for me and I set a plate for Jesus. He didn't put anything in, 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 the, in the plate, but a plate yeah. mat and Jesus' plate on the side. Amen. You know, right. <laughs> He's honoring his God. Having that God. childlike faith, you know? Yes. Having that yes. childlike faith. And I pray for you guys guys out there too, that you have that childlike faith that know that Jesus is with you no matter what. You know, make it personal. You know, talk to him. And people might say, who is she talking to? Who are you talking about? You know, <laughs> just who cares? But just yeah. do that, you know, because God has so many promises for you. And like Pastor said in the beginning here, that, uh, you know, we, I have a website, it's called Greater Faith Outreach Ministry, and you can go on and get these teachings. You can also go further. I have different, uh, different uh, subjects, and it, yes. it shows you how you can grow and shows you, shows you how you, what to do after you get saved. It's a gamut of, of teachings and things to help oh, yeah. you, to build you up, to make, help you get strong. And I also have a Greater Faith outreach page that you can go to and that you can link on to all the YouTubes that we have. We have Amen. a whole bunch of YouTube we don't yes. talk about on Facebook. You can mm -hmm. look into those too. So we just want to help build your faith and, and help you to stay strong in the Lord because he said those who overcome has so much to look forward to. Matter of fact, you have so much to look forward to right now because Jesus is with you. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. He is with you and he, you have abundant life, you know, and you're rich. I like what he told Hallelujah. the churches. He said, people might think you're poor, but you are rich, rich. because you That's have right. Jesus. When you Amen. have Jesus, you have it all. You don't have to go fight the courts to get your way and do this and do that. You got Jesus, you got everything. And he'll give you what you need. Because when you seek him, you seek the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, all things will be added. The blessings will chase you down. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Woo, Jesus, I tell you. Well, Pastor, I see our time is winding out. You have the last words here so we close. Yes, I just, I speak this over everybody on December 11, 2020. Everybody who's just having a difficult time, whether, again, it's the finances, whether it's the thoughts of suicide, whether it's the depression, whether it's the COVID, the anxiety, the worry, just confusion, not knowing. Um, I leave you with Psalms 50, uh, 522. Cast your burden upon mm -hmm. the Lord and he will sustain you. Yeah. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. That is your word of healing, your word of mm -hmm. meditation, your word that you can go to uh, God's throne room with. Your, your weapon of warfare mm -hmm. that you can, whatever you're going through, you're casting all, you're casting all of it on him. And he promises that mm -hmm. you will not be shaken. You will not be moved. You are a son. You are a daughter. This is your promise. This is your portion and your master. Guess what? He's allegiant unto you. He's loyal unto you and he's faithful unto you. Okay. Mm -hmm. You may not physically always feel it's not about physical. Again, mm -hmm. it's about the faith, knowing that all you have to, one thing, all you have to do is believe. believe. And <laughs> if you're like, oh, I'm a little shaky in my faith, Father, help me in my yep. unbelief. Yes. Amen. So yes. that's your word of recovery. That's your word of recovery. In Jesus' name, we seal it in the blood. Amen. Blood. Amen. Well, Amen. I tell you, we really enjoyed this time with you guys. So uh, study, we'll, we're going to come back with the Church of Sardis, and then we're going to do Philadelphia and Laodicea. Those are the last three. So get in the Bible and study with us, you know, guys, get in there, you know, because this teaching is awesome because God wrote this all again. This is like a love letter to us. You know, so until next time, everybody, bye-bye. Bye, Pastor. God bless, God bless you. you. Thank you, Pastor. Bye-bye.